Welcome back. So it's t today, like we said at the beginning of the program, is International Boys Day or uh, uh, Boy, uh, World Boy Day. Anyway, uh, we are having a conversation surrounding the boy child. A lot of attention has been placed on the female, on the girl child. And um, this year is the second time that this um, day is celebrated world over and talking about the International Boys Day. Now, I'm sure you're very familiar with, the, with this uh, parlance. Uh, it's a man's world. We're going to find out really if it's a man's world in this regard. Uh, joining us in our Lagos studio, we have Ola Akinwe. He's the founder of Boys Mentoring Advocacy Network. Also, he's also Nigeria's coordinator, World Day of the Boy Child. You're welcome to the program. Good morning. Good to have you. Yeah, we, we, we're glad to well. have you on this uh, day, the red day that we, we celebrate men, but thankfully, uh, is now being recognized world over to be celebrated every uh, May 16. Now, before you came on set, I think we had a discussion. Would you say that there is so much imbalance between the girl child and the boy child? Sure. Very well. Uh, when, when you look at uh, gender equality, what it used to be before is areas where boys have privileges than girls. But right now, it, it, it shouldn't be so any, anymore because there are areas where girl, the girl child is having privileges more than the boy child. Mm. So to, to balance it, if you want to redefine gender equality, it will mean areas where the boys are not doing well. Now we have to have a social dialogue around that, centered on that. Then areas where the guests are not doing well, we deliberate on that, not to focus on the gay child alone. So right now, the narrative of gender equality has to change. I'm because trying to figure out what privileges you think the girl child has over the boy child, because like I said earlier, people say it's a man's world. Men are more favored than women in many cases. If you look at the statistic we have now, in literacy skills, the boy child is Feeling, falling behind the girl child. These are areas we have to do. When you look at the rate at which uh, uh, girls are graduating from university, this day, of course many boys are successful, but we are losing terrible millions of boys out there. So m more girls are more, when it comes to advancing careers, you, you, you see them. When you look at dropouts from schools, when you look at suicide, when you look at the issue of crime, mm. where, where, where do you see more of this happening? With the boy child. Okay, Ola, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at the fundamentals here. Uh, at what point do you think we are missing it? Um, let's look at the family structure here, where in the Nigerian system, you could, you could hit the male child, and for the female child, you pat her on the back. And um, you realize that uh, growing up, it is perceived that the male child should be stronger, should be harder, should not be emotional, should not shed tears. Do we see all of this playing out uh, against the male child in the future? Yeah, you see, that, that's a myth stereotype. It has always been there. You see, when you're asking a male child not to cry, you are telling him not to suppress his emotions. And when his emotions are suppressed, he can't express himself. Yeah. You understand? And when there is no self-expression, you see fear. You see failure. And when you look at the family structure, what is good for the girl? Let me take you into the brain science right now. Because research have it. When you see a boy of two years, and a girl of two years, their brains are not developing at the same time because they have two different brain areas. The female tends to work better with the white area of the brain, while the boy works better with the gray area. What it means is this. If, if you have a proximal association, and you call a girl child who is two years, and you say, oh, let me see, for instance, the son. The gay child will give you words like moon, like sky, like star. But when you ask the boy child, 
it's going to give you what like hot, big. So even from the cradle as they grow up, they learn differently. But we don't know that. The educational system is not structured to understand this brain system. So right from childhood, it's not only from the family. The boy child is frustrated. Because when you said this child to go to school, probably at three, do you understand? The brain of a male will come to full development at 30. Mm. And that of the gay child will come to full development at 22. Are you serious? Yeah. Scientifically, it's proven. I have to research that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about... Look at the work of Michael Gurian or Michael Thompson. You see all of this there. Now, the, the, guy, the, the, the gay child that is half matured at 11, and the boy child has to be half mature at what? 15. You keep them in the same class. So the gecha has what we call the verba sensorial skill. The boy child has the spatial mechanical skill, or you call it the graphics, the graphics of visual skills. So you don't put them in the same class, and you want them to learn at the same pace. The boy, because he doesn't have that verbal skill, he's been feminized. The standard of school is being set for that guy, what is set for the gecha. Okay, let's talk about the dangers the boy child faces and how we should stop these things from happening to the male child. I don't know if David talked about a guy crying. You know, when you see a man crying, like, why are you crying? He's a, are you a woman? That kind of, you know, uh, interpretation when a, a guy cries. But we also know that they face sexual abusers from either their nannies or their mothers or their aunts. They're, always, they're sometimes abused by the female uh, species. In fact, if you ask... Uh, out of 10 boys, you ask them this question, they'll tell you they were abused while growing up. So then they didn't know it was an abuse at that yeah, time, but yeah. growing up they got to understand that yeah. it was an abuse. Now how can we protect our boy or child? Because I know that for girls, they'll tell you you do not allow them to touch you. But for guys, how can we protect them from sexual abuse and emotional abuse as well? You see, for, for sexual abuse of boys, I think uh, parents have to be watching who, who you entrust your son with. It's, it's necessary because this this boils down to emotional issues. It is going to, this thing will linger for more than thirty years in the life of that boy, and he has a way of affecting the boy when he 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 becomes a man. That's 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 that. so abuse generally is something that we all need. Like 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 let me put it this way: you see, before you think of even having a child. You should know that you're having a 20 years project. 20 years project? Yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Because it's it, it, it total commitment. This guy is going to depend on you for 20 years. You understand? Okay. So how, how you fix that boy depends on your relationship initially with him. So if the boy is not talking with you right from the point he's growing up, is going to affect coming to you when he's sexually abused. So there must be an open communication between you and your son. Let nobody come in between you at that level. Because the moment he begins to conceal something from himself and fails to reveal to them, it becomes a problem. And that's where men have to be careful here, and mothers. You have to know what is going on every day in the life of your son. It's necessary. Very, very, very necessary. And don't think you can fix the child yourself. It's your life that fix your children's life. Hmm. So you can't fix the child by flogging or by... No, 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 no. They imitate you right from childhood. In fact, it just... It just right, right from the day the child arrives, you just say that it's just you. So everything you do around that child, he or she imitates. And that's exactly what it's going to be. So I advise parents, what you need to do, fix yourself. No, don't fix your child. When you fix yourself, when your child is growing up, it picks up the necessary values and qualities. And you talk about crying like you said. You see, Martin Luther said something. He said, violence is the cry of the unheard. 
Violence is the cry of the unheard. Okay. Now, when a child cries at a tender age, is it that he's crying because he's hungry or there's a pain? If you begin to neglect that cry, you are developing anger in that child. And when he begins to grow up, that neglect has already set in. So it's building up that anger against you. So when a baby cries or your son is crying, find out exactly before he turns out to be a violent boy. Because there's a need at that particular time that he's, he's requesting for. Okay, let's, let's, let's move away from that. Let's look at um, the legal backings for, for, for children um, and with a male child in particular. Do we have, uh, uh, do we have laws that, are, that protects the Nigerian male child? Nigeria? You know, the Child Act law is for every child, mm. not one for one girl or for mm. one boy. Yes, and so we work within the context of the law that... How is appropriate is it in protecting the male child? It's not that the laws are not there, but the enforcement is what we are talking about. How do we enforce these laws to the benefit of the, child, of the male child? That's the question we should be asking. And this is where we, have, we need the government and the institutions to come in. All right, you, you talked about um, being a reflection of what, of what your child yeah. does. Now, I, I heard this story some time ago on the radio uh, where a, a father was uh, riding with his, his son in the car, a, a toddler, and then they, they approached a uh, traffic light that was, you know, the it was the red light that was on, and the father beats the traffic light. And the son says, Dad, but it's red light showing, and red means stop. Why didn't you stop? Now, the father was amazed, was shocked that his son actually noticed uh, that he erred. And of course, if you consider like that, it means that when the boy grows up and sees red light, he's going to be the traffic light. But tell me, uh, in as much as the family plays a, a, a huge role, what about the society? Because the, the son wouldn't be in the house all year round. You know, at some point, the child is going to go to maybe a boarding school okay. and mix with a lot of other people. Okay. What is the role of society in shaping the boy child? I think uh, the, the role is simple, but there are, there's an issue I want to bring to, uh, to us to understand. Better. When you talk about the society, you know, the boy child has nature, he has nurturing, and he has a culture. Please, can you take that, that again? That's the nature, nature, the nurture, yeah. and the culture. Okay. Now, if you, if you nurture the child very well from the home, you understand? And we have developmental role models within, available for the child. He's, he's going to come out a very good man. But the challenges we have, even if you take a good boy, for instance, probably maybe the father is dead. Maybe the father works in a different city where he's being raised. Maybe the mother divorced the father, you understand? Or maybe there is emotional distance between the son and the dad. If that, you're talking about the society. Right? If there is no available male that this boy can look up to while growing up, there is 100% tendency he's going to grow up to be a barbarian. Because what we need, what the boy needs, is a strong mentorship and leadership. It is the absence of that. You see those boys on the street, you call boys on the street. What keeps them there? Have we cared to ask? Because they are seeking for a safe place. My question is, is our society safe for our boys? You know, you said something. You said the violence is the cry of, of the unheard. Yeah. Now, earlier on in the program, before you came in, before we started our discussions, my colleague uh, talked about uh, the rise in crime and criminality, and most of them are the boys that perpetrate such things. Yeah. So, are you saying that the reason why, uh, the reason we have a high, uh, the reason we have we have um, a lot of violence in the world, in the country, Nigeria more specifically, is that um, the male child and the boy child was neglected. Yeah, they are neglected. That, that's the truth. And there's no mentorship for them. You know, I was sharing something yesterday somewhere. And I said, if you, if you break the word mentor into three, mentorship into three, 
you have a sheep. A sheep takes somebody somewhere or a goose or anything, isn't it? Then you have men in between, from the root word men. Then you have T-O-R, tor. Let's assume this is the men, we are the men. The tor are the children. And the sheep is what takes them to the destination where they should go to. When the men are not available to take them to where they should go to, how would they arrive there safely? There's no child born behaving responsibly. There's no child born behaving badly. We're responsible for their behaviors. All of us. Pretty sad one. Pretty sad one. But I hope we can get this right uh, moving forward as we celebrate International Boy Day. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we want to have one more word for, for Nigerians before you, we let you go? I, I, th I think what I would tell Nigerians, somebody said it all. He said, we cannot prepare the future for our boys. We can only prepare our boys for the future. What future are we preparing our Nigerian boys for? Is a question that beg for answer in my heart every day. All right, a, a great way to end the discussion, Ola Akiwi, uh, founder of Boys Mentoring Advocacy Network, being and also the Nigerian coordinator, World Day of the Boy Child. Thank you so much for your time with us. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we still have one more discussion for you based on communication. Would you stay with us? <laughs> Say something, you say no.